Hello fellow guitar geeks, in this box I have an Ibanez RGT1221PB DTF. In this video I'm going to unbox it, we're going to check out the specs. I'm going to review it as a non-metal head reviewing what I think is a probably a metal guitar and then at the end of the video I'll let you know whether I think it's worth your hard earned cash or not. So, without further ado, let's crack it open. Okay, let's open this side and then leave the other side on kind of a hinge. Here we go. It's in a soft case. So if you buy an RGT 1221PB DTF, you're going to get a soft case. Um, it's a rather sexy looking soft case. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, score. We got one of the uh, the Ibanez tool things. These are brilliant. Zippy zips. Nice, nice zipping action. Oh, it's attached there as well. There we go. Wow. Okay, so there it is. DTF Dark Twilight Flat. That is a beautiful looking guitar. Not something I'd normally be into. I'm after my quirky stuff, but I love RG guitars. They're my they're my guilty pleasure if 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 that's a thing for guitars. Is that a thing for guitars? So I'm more into my odd shaped and you know less pointies. But the RGT series, any oh, any RG is always interesting to me, and this one is very special. One of the biggest features is that it's neck through. Ta da! Not only is it neck through, meaning that the neck is all one piece all the way down to the bum, and we've got these two side pieces glued on for the body, it's also string through, and we've got these ferrules that are not in a straight line, and uh, not wonky either, they're compensated, because we have a monorail bridge. Or I should say bridges, because each individual saddle is actually its own individual bridge, and you can take off, the, you, could, you could have one string if you want to, and have all the other monorail bridges removed if that's your thing. Um, just holding it first impressions, it's a very soft, smooth feeling guitar. So um, it's not sticky, it's very satinized. The whole body feels very satinized. That's why it's that, that flat, I guess. So you're not getting a shiny gloss finish, which of course is mainly to do, no, not mainly, is a lot to do with the way it looks, but it's a lot to do also with the way it feels. I really, really like it. This, these are my favorite feeling guitars. Where I don't like high gloss finishes. This one, um, it kind of, it, it, it's very satinized. It's very smooth. There would be no problem shredding on it if one were to feel like having a little bit of a shred. Speaking about the neck, we've got a Wizard Three seven-piece neck. There are seven pieces of wood in this neck construction or neck through construction. Let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maple and walnut. So that darker looking uh, wood, the browner color is uh, walnut and the lighter color is maple that is very nicely stained. Look at that, all the way to the top of the headstock, all the way to the bum. We've got 24 frets, a full two octaves. We've got locking tuners. There they are, and I'm sure they're going to do a wonderful job of keeping this guitar in tune. We've got a volute there, even though this super slim Wizard 3 neck is super slim, um, it's a bit thicker there, so it's a bit stronger um, for you know for people that like to get a bit active with their guitars. I love I love the way that the neck becomes the body just here. That feels feels wonderful. If I were to you know play the 24th fret, I could play it with ease. Keeping in tone with its color scheme, and, and probably tone as well, it's got an ebony fretboard with block inlays, my favorite inlays. And when Ibanez uh, asked me which guitar I would like to review, they sent me some pictures and I said this one, because mainly mainly because it has a, um, a non-trem bridge, so I don't have to worry about you know getting excited with that. Also because it's so dark and wonderful looking and that it's got block inlays. So I chose this mostly because I wanted to show you guys uh, the RGT range, the premium range, but also out of the RGTs, I chose this one because of the color, which is one of the main reasons we choose guitars, right? Right. 
I have to say I'm digging the black chromish hardware, the Cosmo Black, as Ibanez call it. It's here, it's here. The, and also it's kind of purpley. Can you see that? I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but it's black with a kind of purple just there. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, it's certainly ornate, but it is beautiful. There's the premium thing on the headstock. And we go one more search of the back. There we are. So you can see that whole guitar with the RG shape body double cutaway and the belly cut. So I've mentioned already that the neck through is maple walnut in seven pieces, but then on top, or if I'm showing you the back, on top we've got a piece of basswood and a piece of basswood or basswood. Then on the front we've got a poplar burl finish. I learned something about burls recently and that it's actually a deformation of the tree. So something has happened to the tree to make it deformed. And it's, it can be environmental or it can be insect damage or, or some, somebody's cut it in some way that causes the tree damage and it ends up looking like this. So us guitar players and I guess furniture enjoyers, furniture enthusiasts, get to um, get to the, get this finish, which is actually a natural anomaly. There you go. The more you know. One final thing about the specs before I move on to the electrics, we have jumbo stainless steel frets. And you can see them here shining and they've got the premium edge treatment. Ooh, which um, it's beautiful. I'm gonna, I'll get a close up for you because that, yeah, they're rounded. Some of the roundedest frets I've ever seen on a guitar. Price wise, we're coming in at 1,200 euros ish, that kind of ballpark, or this in dollars and pounds, if that's your bag. I'm gonna find out if this guitar is, oh, it's, it feels, hang on. It felt like a bit of neck dive going on there. Anyway, I'm gonna find out if this guitar is worth it. So far, the specs and the attention to detail uh, puts it up there as a 1,000-ish price guitar. Uh, oh, I forgot the fairy door. Look, there's the fairy door. So you can grab a pick and you can open that fairy door up with access to the truss rod without needing a screwdriver. And having a look in there is a lovely clean channel. Again, a good attention to detail to show that this guitar has been well built. Okay, I'll talk about the pickups and electrics whilst we test out the sounds. Let's hear everything clean and everything super dirty and get some chugging going on. Actually, before we do, there's the, the jack socket. It's a screwed in type, looks nice. Uh, access port just on the back there. We'll open that up a little bit, have a little look. I've put it in drop D because that's the sort of rhythmy guitar thing that I like to do, and that's what I'm hoping to get from this. But um, unplugged, or rather un unamped, I know you can't hear it well because the mic's on my voice. It is balanced, it's rich, so there's a lot of mid-range there. It's not toppy in any way. This, this feels like a, a fat sounding guitar, but not flubby. Hope that covers all the words that I need to describe something like this. Okay, I'm gonna use the Bad Monkey in the front end of the Engel Fireball 25. That's a really good high gain amp for the sort of stuff that I like to do. It's also got a good clean channel for when you want really clean. You're gonna hear that through the 2x12 Harley Benton Vintage V30 uh, with the Sennheiser E906 and the Captor X with Vintage V30's Dynamic IRs. Hopefully that meant something to you. If it doesn't, then I'm just gonna go through the pickup settings of the guitar with whatever drop D riff I can think of at the time. Okay, we've got Two Damazio pickups, the Tone Zone at the bridge and the Air Norton at the neck. We've got a five-way switch, which is the Dynamics switch, combined with the uh, Alter switch down there. So we've actually got 10 tone combinations. I will switch the Alter switch off and go through each position of the pickups uh, with the same riff so you can hear the difference. <laughs> Thank you. 
Again, I think the word for this guitar is definitely dark. It's full and fat and dark and deep and heavy, even though it's only six strings. Let's put the alter switch on and go back to position one and I'll run through these pickup configurations. This gives us some single coil or split coil sounds uh, and some other different modes combining the pickups in different ways. <laughs> Again, fat, thick, even though some of those were split coil modes. There's the, I think one of my favorite ones is position two with the alter switch on. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's the Demacio pickup giving that, that thrashy kind of presence that I was expecting when going on the bridge in full mode. But looking at my setup, that is just this coil here, the tone zone, just this outer coil there, which is, the, which is definitely my favorite sound from the guitar. <laughs> That's definitely my, my favorite tone of the guitar. I love the way you can fatten it up. It's really fun. I mean, I've been looking for I've done the cheaper, the RGG, the GR, hang on, GRGR, the GORG. Man, there's a lot of Gugadras in there, the Gur. I've played that guitar recently, and it's really cool guitar for the money, but playing this after it is definitely a very, very different experience. So not only did the tones really, really deliver, the feel is just there. So I, f I forget that I'm playing, I forget that I'm, trying to play a guitar, trying to show you a guitar. I, I just play. And regardless of whether you like my playing, I'm enjoying getting these, these sounds out of the guitars. And it's effortless. Effortless is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, I just want to drop D riff forever on this thing. <laughs> And I'm, I'm fine with just drop D riffing. If it, if it works for Ola, then it can work for me as well. But that's, that's where the fun lies for me and this sound of these tones. I know it has 24 frets. I know there are gonna be videos of people shredding up here. That's not what I'm gonna focus on because number one, I can't. And number two, I don't want to. And those two are linked. I don't enjoy that. I enjoy this heaviness. That's why I come from fuzz pedals and grunge. Anyway, let's switch over to the clean side of the fireball and turn the bad monkey off and hear some cleans from this RGT. Super dark. I must say it is a joy. I had to tune it again. It's a joy to tune these, these, these tuners. They, they work wonderfully. They're just hmm, high quality. Mwah, chef's kiss. Okay, some riffage with clean. <laughs>
There's still a little bit of crispy crunchiness coming in when I'm on, on there. And there. But yet again, my favorite tone is that second position. That's beautiful. That, I know I say this a lot, but that's worth the price of admission alone. And if I put the altar switch in, what does that do with the five-way switch settings? Let's have a listen. So the same riff again, just time with the altar switch on. And there's a lot going on there. I, I think it's hard to remember 10 tones. Definitely my favorite tone out of the whole guitar is position two with alter switch off, but alter switch on in that middle, clean. Or was it four? Could be four. It's just beautifully balanced, giving me that right amount of low end, that bottom end when I hit that string. So if you don't hit the bottom string, it's not that low end. So without that low string, I know this is just playing two different style chords, but it's really interesting to hear that huge jump in, in frequency that's on offer just by hitting another string, which sounds obvious, but it isn't always the case with every guitar. It, this guitar seems to know exactly where it wants to give you the tones you need. So you've got to work, you got to work with it. You've got to work in um, cooperation with it to get the tones you want. Yeah. Um, let's open up the back of the guitar and take a look at the wiring inside. That's always interesting to see the build quality, to see what's going on inside this very purpley dark beast. So it's worth noting that this is, this is recessed as well, if that's your bag. I prefer recessed cavities. In there we've got a, a lovely little bit of wiring with some mini pots. I will do some close-ups of this for you so you can see it properly, if that's not close enough. But generally speaking, that's the to-be-expected Ibanez quality wiring system with the quick connectors. There we go, these are, these are quick connectors, you can pop those out. There was a moment then where I thought, I've popped this out, can I pop it back in again? Because, you know, I've broken guitars in the past. Good to know that I didn't break this one, I think. I think it still works. Anyway, let's have a look inside here. This is where you might actually need to open up. I wouldn't ever recommend opening this unless you're curious like I am, but this part is where you access the jack socket. I hope Ibanez are not watching this. Whoa, there we go, right. <laughs> Um, it's on the floor. There's the jack socket. So again, I'll do a close-up of this for you so you can see it properly, but that is a very well soldered, one of the tightest, biggest, goldest nuts I've ever seen in my life. And even throwing that around in there, nothing, hang on, nothing is gonna, I'd be very surprised if you ever have an issue with that jack socket. That's wonderful. I have a favorite jack socket and this is it. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. Never thought I'd have a favorite jack socket. Anyway, um, I'll put it back together and we can continue what we're doing. 
In fact, let's talk about the case for a moment. The case is soft padded. It's not the world's um, most safe case, that's for sure, but it is well padded. Definitely something you can take on a train or on a plane or in an automobile, but nothing you'd want to take on tour. It will not protect it on tour. It's, it's, it is a kind of floppy case. It's got one, two, three pockets, all with pretty good zips. Again, not the best zips in the world, but pretty good. The main zip is good quality. That's important. So you don't want your guitar uh, main pocket to be falling out. Also, it's got um, padded with this rough side so it doesn't slip uh, rucksack parts. You've got a handle there, which quite honestly doesn't seem that strong. I wouldn't use that. And then you've got a clippy thing here for clipping things on, like your keys or whatever other things you need to carry. Then handles here. Honestly, I would be carrying that with the rucksack parts. That's, that's the rucksack parts are definitely the strongest part of the case. Yeah, I'm gonna give that, if I were scoring things out of 10, this case would get a six and a half out of 10. One thing we haven't mentioned is this, the Ibanez tool. I'm not gonna unbag it because I already have one. This is one of my favorite tools in the guitar world, it has all the things that you need. So all your Allen keys, all your truss rod stuff, um, that for getting stuff out your teeth. And then you've got screwdrivers, uh, more Allen keys, and then that for poking people when they play a wrong note. Yeah, it's worth mentioning because I think that's around 30 bucks. So you get that with your guitar as well. Um, I must remember to put that back. There, it's in the box now. Back to the guitar. Now we should definitely weigh the guitar because it feels weighty, but not heavy, if that makes sense. There's some weight to it, but it, for me, it doesn't feel like it's too heavy. So I'm gonna guess three and a half kilos. Three point three, three point three kilos, not bad. So down to it, do I think that you should buy the RGT 1221 PB DTF? Yes, if you're after something with no trem, something that is rock solid, something that's fairly dark sounding, but you can get some more presence out of it by using that alter switch, and definitely something that's a riff machine. I'm sure it's shreddable, but for me, it really excels in that low end chug chug chugging. The only downside, I guess, is there is so much on offer from Ibanez at the moment that they have so many guitars that you can choose from. And I really think it comes down to the finish. It's, I think it's a gorgeous finish. I think it's absolutely wonderful. They've obviously spent a lot of the money making sure this guitar looks and feels fantastic because it does. There's nothing I would change on this. If, if I were to complain, I know I keep saying it's dark, but it is a dark guitar, both in looks and in tone. And I like the fact that those two things are reflected in, in each other. Locking tuners, everything's rock solid. Yeah, I recommend this guitar if you're looking for a dark chugging machine. What surprised me most about the guitar were the clean tones. It's really, really beautifully clean and not in a sterile way. So some Ibanez guitars, for me, tend to be a little bit sterile. And when you get the Ibanez pickups, sometimes they come across as being uninspiring. But these pickups, the Tone Zone and the Air Norton from Damazio, killer, absolutely killer in this guitar. I think the separation when I was doing that clean, if I go back, go back to the clean, the separation I was getting around, is it there? That's a lot to do, or it must be a lot to do with the, the bridge, the individual monorail bridge saddles, bridge pieces. I've used monorail bridges before, but it's not until this guitar that I've heard the massive difference between having what I think would be a, a one-piece bridge and having these individual bridge pieces. I know they're touching, I know they're resonating together, but something about this guitar is making these strings ring out individually. And I think that the monorail bridge has something to do with that. Also, other stuff. So yeah, ultimately, through neck guitar, locking tuners, Demazio pickups, you either like the finish or you don't. From a feel point of view, if I wasn't looking at it, I'm in love with it. Also, with the finish, I'm, I'm also in love with it. It is not something I would have looked at a few years ago, but now that I just dig it. 
I like that it's, even though it's so complex, it's kind of understated because it's dark. And that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for joining me. This is the end of the video, which means you've reached the end of the video club and to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite since 2020. When you leave your comment telling me what you think of this Ibanez RGT, please also include the phrase, it's really dark. And that'll let me know that you watched this part. Thanks for doing that. That just leaves me to say thank you to Ibanez for loaning me this guitar and for sponsoring the video. And also thanks to you for watching. I'll be around. Subscribe if you like, you know, throw a thumbs up if you fancy it. Otherwise, um, I'll see you at some other point in the future. Cheers. Bye-bye.